So for the schedule, uh, the only assignment remaining is lab 10. That's due on Monday, December 7th. So be sure to get that uh, done and submitted. <clears throat> and then we have the final exam coming up. So the final exam date is posted on the schedule. It's on the university webpage, the standard time, uh, the specified time. It is Friday, December 11th, 7.30 to 10 p.m. Uh, the material covered on the final exam will be op amps through the end of the course. So basically, it'll focus on that material. Now, in general, the final exam is cumulative because you have to know Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law, Ohm's law. You have to know what node voltages are. Uh, so, so in general, it's cumulative, but I'm going to cover um, the, all the material really in focusing on op amps through the material uh, that we'll finish up today. Um, and we're going to cover, uh, if you look at the course roadmap here that I have up, we just finished up sensors. Um, and we're going to complete, uh, we have completed the sensor topic. We talked about transducers and circuits to interface to transducers. And so we're going to uh, start this applications block and finish this applications block today. And what I like to do is introduce a topic, cover a topic um, that sometimes isn't covered in electronics and circuits courses, but is actually useful. So I like to cover, uh, what I'm going to cover today is voltage regulators. Um, and we'll talk about that. Um, so, so that will be the end of the course material. Look for exam review problems online. They are posted. So look at the, under the review problems on Canvas, you'll see exam-like problems but also take a look at the practice problems that, that are posted. There's op amps, there's some digital problems, and there, there's, uh, there are answers there too, and steps to work through those problems. So uh, don't forget, ask questions during class by unmuting, uh, and otherwise, please stay muted so we can keep the background noise low. And I'll have more to say about the final exam uh, via email uh, and so, so look for that. We'll talk, talk about that when we start the review, either at the end of this class or the start of the next class. And uh, I'll work through some problems. Okay. So what I'd like to talk about today is voltage regulation. Uh, voltage regulation is, is really a common function implemented in uh, you know, I would say all electronic circuits that get connected to a battery or to a power supply. Um, any most products have voltage regulation built in. Um, the purpose of voltage regulation is to maintain a constant voltage as a power supply for your circuit or your product. So let, let's take this example. If you have uh, a nine volt battery it produces nine volts nominally, and that varies as the battery discharges and gets lower. And let's say you have a, a five volt circuit. Uh, maybe that's a microcontroller, maybe that's some circuit like your infrared uh, uh, tester circuit. The voltage regulator goes in between, and that's what maintains based on some higher, uh, and actually maybe lower input voltage, but it maintains an output voltage that, that you design for or, or you specify. So voltage regulator interfaces a circuit that requires one voltage um, to a source that provides a different voltage. A voltage regulation provides a constant voltage for a load, let's say as a battery discharges or as a source voltage changes. Okay, so that can happen when the battery discharges or you, let's say, have a solar panel um, and the sun goes down, <clears throat> maybe it does go down, goes behind the clouds so the voltage falls. Maybe you've started up your car versus having your car turned off and the uh, voltage varies between 12 volts and maybe the charging voltage of the battery. So a voltage regulator provides a constant voltage at its output. And also as uh, the, the load current changes, 
the voltage regulator can provide a constant voltage. Now there are several ways to maintain a constant voltage. We're going to take a look at a, a simple, easy to use voltage regulator called a linear voltage regulator. It's based on a Zener diode. There are other voltage regulators. Um, you might call them DC to DC converters. They work differently than this and, um, it, and they're more complex and some are more efficient. So there's more than one solution for voltage regulation. Uh, we're going to cover a uh, kind of the basic first step into voltage regulation called a linear voltage regulator. So let's take a look at Zener diodes. We talked about diodes, just regular silicon diodes and LEDs. Um, and what I'd like to introduce now is the Zener diode, which is a, a method or a critical part of a linear voltage regulator. So here are two symbols for a Zener diode. Uh, up top, you see kind of that hockey stick and on the bottom kind of that backwards S there. Uh, uh, as uh, at the cathode, and those typically indicate that this is not a regular diode, this is a Zener diode. And we're defining the voltage just like we did before, having the positive side of VD at the anode, and the current ID goes into the anode of the diode. If we plot the diode's current versus voltage characteristic, well, this looks like a regular diode, like what we drew in class. On the right-hand side, there's a knee in the curve when V sub F, the forward voltage, is reached. And on the, on the left-hand side, you see very little current flows when the voltage is negative, and then you see breakdown. Now, the difference here, compared to the diodes we've talked about, is that this Zener voltage, V sub Z, this breakdown voltage, is actually designed for, it's actually, um, uh, specified for the Zener diode and usually at a fairly reasonable voltage like negative three volts or negative five volts, or some, some fairly low uh, negative voltage compared to the breakdown voltages of, of silicon diodes. And actually, uh, this is typically where the Zener diode is meant to operate. It's meant to operate in breakdown. So when operating, in breakdown, the Zener diode doesn't break, it just operates along this really steep curve right here, okay? Um, so these diodes are typically used to let current flow in the reverse direction at this negative VZ value and with a negative ID. And operating in this region is, is perfectly normal. Doesn't mean you can't operate in the forward bias region, but typically, to use its primary function, you operate in the uh, reverse bias breakdown region. And that Zener voltage VZ is specified and you choose a Zener diode based on that voltage for your application. And it's useful for voltage regulators, uh, voltage clipping to protect a circuit from a big input, uh, surge suppressors, like if you have a maybe lightning protection, want to protect the circuit from high voltage spikes, um, and other circuit protection, just generally maybe applying too high of a battery voltage to a circuit that's, that's a relatively low voltage. So these Zener diodes are useful for uh, protection and regulation. They're, they're typical applications. Let's take a look at a typical Zener, Zener diode circuit. Um, where you have a resistor and a Zener diode. <clears throat> so imagine you have a supply that, that varies. So this is a battery here, it's a, just a voltage source. Imagine that varies, and we're going to look at what happens to the voltage, um, this VO, this output voltage, where you have a resistor and um, a Zener diode in series like this. And note that the Zener diode is reverse biased if VSS is a positive value, that's intentional. If you write a KVL equation around this loop here, uh, you get this, this equation, right? Minus VSS plus uh, IDRD uh, 
uh, let's see, ID goes L minus ID RD minus uh, VD equals zero, and then rearrange, you get this equation. And what you can do is look at this, uh, look at the diode characteristic on a plot and compare, uh, well, what happens to the, to the voltage across that diode as VSS changes? So this is an example characteristic, this green line, we're just looking at this like lower left quadrant, or here's ID versus VD, and we're just interested in the lower left quadrant. Um, this example is showing that as you change the source voltage from 15 volts to 20 volts, right, and you match it up with the characteristic of this diode, the diode voltage only changes by half a volt, right? And, and actually that's pretty, Mm, that's pretty conservative. In other words, the, actually a real diode might change less than that. It might change from minus 10 to minus 10.1 volts. But, but the point is illustrated here that as you change this VSS uh, voltage, and let's say you're using the output voltage over here for something, right? This VO, which is minus VD, that VD value or minus VO uh, changes very little. So, so this is how a Zener diode can be used uh, to maintain a constant voltage when the source voltage is changing. Now, this, this isn't how I would build a voltage regulator, but, but I'll show you in a real voltage regulator circuit how this is used, okay? Uh, so that really the takeaway is that the output voltage of this circuit, or VO, stays relatively constant compared to changes in the input voltage. And that's a characteristic that we're looking for. So let's take a look at using this circuit, um, this sub circuit in a, in a larger circuit in a voltage regulator. So here's how you might build a linear voltage regulator using a transistor as the, the active device that's controlling current. Let's suppose you have a source voltage on the left and this, this voltage um, might vary. And you have a resistor, a load resistor on the right. And let's say, let's suppose maybe this is just in general a load whose current demands change, right? Maybe you turn a light on, you turn a light off and the current, current demands change over here. So you want the load voltage across that load or this resistor in this case to be constant. Okay. Um, well, here is, again, here, this block here is a resistor value. So is this box over here. Um, so here is a, between the VS node up top, uh, and I would consider this ground at the bottom, it's usually grounded. You have a resistor and a Zener diode <clears throat> right here. and this Zener diode is going to have current flowing through it backwards, right, in the reverse direction. And it will have a relatively constant VZ uh, value. So VZ is going to be a, a constant value, or close to constant. And that's going to help maintain, I'll show you how, VL at a constant. So, so this is what happens. Imagine, imagine you have a, a VS value it's higher than your VL value. So current wants to flow through this transistor. This transistor is controlling the current flow through the load. Um, well, if let's suppose that load voltage tries to fall, right? Uh, for some reason, that load voltage tries to fall. Well, if you look at a KVL, or here's the KVL, around this right-hand loop here, if VL tries to fall with a constant VZ, that means VBE, the base to emitter voltage, increases just a little bit. And we know that as the base to emitter voltage tries to increase, right, this is a diode characteristic, that sharp knee, so a little bit of VBE increase causes a big IB increase. An IB increase will cause IC to increase, right? And so the load current increases, right? The, this, this load current increases from the collect, uh, you know, collector to emitter. And that 
causes the uh, load voltage to increase, right? Vehicles IR, if this current increases, the, uh, the load voltage increases. And even if this is some other kind of electronics device, as its voltage tries to fall, VBE increases, more current is supplied, and that restores VL. So this is essentially, this is a feedback loop here. Uh, the, this constant voltage VZ is, is key to this because it's the constant against which VL is compared uh, and VBE changes in order to restore VL to a constant voltage, okay? <clears throat> so this is, a, this is a simple way to visualize how you can use uh, this, this, this reference voltage here, this constant voltage, in order to maintain a constant load voltage. Okay, and any questions on this so far? Okay, I see a question. Uh, let's see, do they, I, I may have missed this from before, but it says, do they work in series with each other? Was that from this slide or a previous slide? Uh, just the diodes in general. Do they the, work in series with each other? In what way? What, in what uh, what way would you want to use them in series? Um, if one, if you go back, to, I think like two slides to the yeah. graph. That one no, there? Um, if that, like we'll say 10.5 is the value. Uh, if that's too much, can you put two of them together for that uh, difference to be even smaller? Well, what you could do is you could use them in series and, and raise that voltage. Uh, what I mean by raise is go more negative. So you could take a 10 volt zener and a 5 volt zener and create 15 volts. Okay. But there are zeners that are much lower than 10 volts. Um, you can get, you know, uh, one volt zeners or, or uh, you know, three volt zeners. And so they would have their, their knee, their uh, breakdown region, like down here, lower in lower in magnitude on this plot. Yeah, but you could use them in series if you want. I'm gonna call it a bigger magnitude Zener diode voltage, yes. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we can take this one step further and look at a linear voltage regulator that's op amp based. And this is closer to way they're, the way they're implemented in, in a uh, in integrated circuit. So uh, here's right, another Zener diode. So you look at VS, we have this biased Zener diode. So there's a constant voltage VZ right here. And then we have an op amp connected to the base of this transistor. So this transistor is the current regulating device. Okay. Um, this, is, this is what's controlling the current. This is the valve controlling current to the load. So uh, what you want is if the load voltage tries to fall, more current is supplied. And if the load voltage starts to increase, less current is supplied. And that's what this, this feedback loop does. You're feeding back with an op amp in a feedback loop, right? Here's, here's the op amp's output, a connection to the inverting input. Um, you're feeding back, sensing the voltage across the load. There's a resistive divider here that divides that down to compare an appropriate voltage to the Zener voltage right, right, right here. And so this op amp plays the role in adjusting the base voltage uh, so that the base emitter voltage changes to control the current to the load. So if the load voltage tries to fall, right, VL tries to fall, right, um, that means that, so if you look at, let's, let's, call, let's call the bottom node a ground node, you could ground the bottom node. So I can talk about node voltages. That means VL node is up here, it tries to fall. That means the inverting inputs voltage falls, right? Because that's the output of this voltage divider here. Um, if this voltage at the inverting input tries to fall, VID gets bigger, right? It makes a bigger difference between these two inputs. Um, and that will cause the output to go to a higher voltage here, right? The base node voltage goes higher, which makes VBE bigger. Uh, uh, which which causes more current flow. Um, this voltage divider here is, is just to be able to scale that load voltage 
to match the Zener voltage because VID is going to strive to be zero, just like in our regular negative feedback op amps, right? This is going to strive to be zero. Um, and so this voltage divider, and they show it as a, this is shown as a, this is another way to draw a potentiometer right here, right? So this is an adjustable resistor or a potentiometer. And so you can do some adjustments here in order to adjust the load voltage uh, to whatever you wanted. Okay, so all of this, this uh, I wanted to show you this before I just showed you the chip that does this. The, um, this function is available in voltage integrated circuits. So here's an example of, here's some voltage regulators right here. This, these look like transistors right at the lower right in the package that you've used. They're not, they're voltage regulators. Up at the upper left, these look like all bigger transistor packages. They're actually just voltage regulators built in. They have three terminals. If you look at the lower right, you have input, output, and ground. Okay, and if I we dig into the block diagram of this chip, uh, it should look a bit like, well, what we just talked about, but in block diagram form. With, with some extra parts. So the reference voltage is generated here. That reference voltage is a, it, it is based on a Zener diode. It's based on a junction. <clears throat> um, there's a current generator here to maintain a constant current through that, uh, through that Zener diode. This error amplifier is the op amp that's comparing some scale down, uh, divided down version of the output voltage, right? And, um, compared to the reference voltage, and then controlling the series pass element, which is either a, uh, you know, a BJT transistor or a FET to control current to the output. But, but you can see the feedback loop here comparing the output, you know, the output voltage is divided down into an error amplifier, which then controls the current going to the output so that you can maintain a, uh, constant voltage at the output. And, and these voltage regulators are designed such that the input voltage has to be higher than the output voltage. Okay, if you need an output voltage higher than the input voltage, you need to do other things. Those are called DC to DC converters, and they involve converting DC to AC to step up the voltage using an inductor and, uh, and then rectify, essentially rectifying that voltage. So that's a more complex, more expensive, um, actually more efficient in many cases, but we're going to look at just linear voltage regulators here. These regulators, so again, if you need, let's suppose you're doing some project in the future and you're running a five volt Arduino or something like that, and you have a, you know, uh, four 1.5 batteries stacked up in series to give you six volts. And you want to, you, you need five volts, or maybe you need 3.3 volts. You can go buy one of these voltage regulators, uh, and I'll show you how to connect it. But input, output, ground, um, and then and then you have a voltage based on your higher input voltage. They're available in fixed voltages or variable voltage configurations. Some common parts are the LM7805. This 05 means it's a five volt regulator. You can get, I think, a 78. 09 for 9 volt and 7812 for 12 volts. There's also an adjustable regulator where you can add external resistors in order to make a 7.2 volt supply if you need it. Okay, so, uh, but they're really easy to use. Uh, a typical circuit would would look like this. And, and these circuits, if you look in the data sheet for the voltage regulator, integrated circuit, you'll, you'll find these application circuits. You, uh, basically it's input, output, ground connected to the voltage regulator with a couple capacitors. These capacitors uh, do a couple things. They, they uh, smooth out the voltage, which means that if you had some ripple, right? Remember we talked about ripple voltage um, out, of, out of a um, rectifier. If there's some ripple, these capacitors are low impedance to ground. They filter out that ripple. They also, in some regulators, provide stability because there's a feedback loop here and you don't want this to go unstable um, and oscillate. So sometimes these uh, voltage regulator 
capacitors are required for stability. But but this is an example. If you needed five volts from from a six volt input or a nine volt input, you buy an LM seventy eight hundred five. You buy two capacitors. You wire it up like this. Connect your battery to the left. Your output is available from the right. Connect it to your Arduino or whatever circuit you have. Uh, the variable voltage regulation looks like this. Um, you actually provide an external set of pair of resistors and you can set the voltage anywhere between, well, close to zero to close to the input voltage. Okay, so for a, for a fixed regulator, the voltage is set. You choose the part number for the voltage you want. And then for a variable regulator, uh, there's some design guidance usually in the data sheet on what ratio these resistors have to be. They're just a voltage divider. That's all they are. Um, uh, what values you have to use here is in the data sheet and you can set whatever voltage you want. What does the resistor with the arrow through it represent? Oh, you know, that's, that's um, showing a variable resistor. So if you're going to make a variable output, you would keep R1 at 1.2K. And uh, this means you would take a potentiometer and maybe either use the connection just between what we called A and what we called W as a variable resistor. And then you could vary uh, the voltage output. Okay. So yeah, whenever you see an arrow through, mm, there's several devices where you'll see like an arrow through a resistor, an arrow through an amplifier, that usually means the, the, the value is adjustable. So um, I talked a little bit about uh, efficiency. I mentioned that sometimes these regulators aren't so efficient. I, I just want to point this out. If you're using these in a battery critical application, you're going to go, you know, maybe even just launch a high altitude balloon and you need regulation for, you know, however long from a rechargeable battery. It's important to consider um, power efficiency and um, calculating the, the power that is absorbed by these regulators. So a, a linear voltage regulator absorbs power. Okay, what's that mean? It means it wastes power. If, if the power is delivered to anything other than your intended load, it's a waste, right? So the linear voltage regulator absorbs power um, as a trade for maintaining a constant voltage. So it uses some of your battery power, battery energy, uh, in a way you, you don't really want, but that's that's what the price you have to pay for having a constant voltage at the output. The power absorbed by the voltage regulator depends on the difference between the source voltage and the load voltage for these linear regulators. Um, it also depends on the amount of current required or provided to the load. So as the difference between uh, the source voltage and the load voltage increases, uh, power efficiency falls. So I'm gonna show you an example of this. So suppose you have a source voltage, a battery or whatever, and you have a device that requires five volts um, at one amp. Okay, so you have this device, you need five volts at one amp, that might change, but let's say nominally it's it's one amp. And you have a um, five volt linear voltage regulator, right? So this is used to power the device using a source that has a higher voltage. Let's calculate the power efficiency. Okay, power efficiency is a measure of, um, well, how efficient your circuit is. What's that mean? You're gonna per put a certain amount of power in, and then you're gonna get a certain amount of power out of this regulator. And if, if you get, you, you never can do this, but if you get all the power out that you put in, the efficiency is 100%, it's never that, but, um, and your desire is to have as high of an efficiency as you can for a voltage regulator so that the energy from your battery goes to the intended use. Okay, so we're gonna calculate the power efficiency, eta, this is an eta, uh, it equals 
P out over P in when using a six volt source, right? VS a six volt or and um, a 12 volt source. And then we're gonna calculate the power absorbed, in other words, wasted as heat uh, by the voltage regulator for each case. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to the, the whiteboard. And we'll, we will work this problem Okay, so here is, here's that circuit. And so let's, let's start with, um, let's start with part A, right? Part A was VS, VN equals six volts. Okay, we, we wanna calculate the efficiency, which is P out over PN. So, well, one way to do this, let's just calculate P out and let's calculate uh, P in. Let's start with P in. So what I, what I defined in the circuit was that this I out value here, this device requires one amp nominally. So let's, let's say that's uh, one amp. This voltage regulator, its ground connection is, it, it's powering its internal circuits. It's meant to be a really low value. Uh, the, the current is meant to be a really low value. Uh, and some of that current goes through the Zener diode. It is the current, that, that negative ID going through the Zener diode in order to maintain a constant voltage reference within this regulator. It's a, re it's a small value compared to one amp or compared to your, your typical device's power. Um, it's a small value. We're gonna call it zero amps. Okay, we're gonna say that's zero. If you really cared about really high efficiency and your device is only using maybe, you know, a few milliamps, then you, you probably would consider this. But at, at a one amp output current of this regulator, and maybe this is a milliamp or a few milliamps, we're just gonna say it's, it's negligible for the purposes of, of, this, um, of this example. I in is this value here. That's the current into the, the regulator. And so I in is a, and this is I out of the regulator. So we're gonna say that uh, I in is approximately I out. Maybe a few milliamps difference, but that won't matter when you have an output current of one amp. Okay, so so P in is is going to equal uh, I in times V in. So in this case, that's going to be one amp times V in. We said is six volts. That's six watts. Okay. Uh, P out is the power out of the regulator or, or delivered to that device, absorbed by that device for whatever purpose that device is for. Um, and so we have I out uh, times V out of the regulator. And so that's one times V out, which is five. So that's five Watts. Okay. So, so the efficiency is P out over P in five over six. And you had better get the answer all the time that the output uh, power is less than the input power because you can't have a voltage regulator with better than 100% efficiency. And so that's 83%. Okay, so that's the power efficiency. If you look at um, how much power is being absorbed by the regulator, well, I have, uh, so power absorbed by the regulator is going to be P in minus P out, right? The power is going somewhere. And in this circuit, it either, it either goes to the device or goes to the regulator. It's coming from the source. Uh, so that's six minus five, that's one watt. 
So one watt is getting absorbed by that regulator. Um, so 83% of your power, of, your, of the energy maybe in this battery is getting delivered to the device and the other 16.7% is, is getting used by the regulator. Um, so, you know, you, that's, it, it is what it is. But you're not getting all the power that you delivered to the circuit, to your device. And at one watt, that, uh, that regulator would get warm. So you're heating it up. That's where the energy is going. Um, professor? Yes. This might have been mentioned before, but uh, if, if approximately zero amps comes out of the regulator in that bottom um, short, why, why is that there? Oh, why is it there? Well, because it's really not zero amps. It's really uh, uh, inside there. There's a resistor and there's a Zener diode that's reverse biased. And so there's a, a few milliamps going through that Zener diode in order to maintain some reference voltage internal. Okay, so there is a little bit of, there's a little bit of current going through that Zener diode built into this regulator. Uh, and, and you need that current in order to actually have this, uh, remember the curve looks like this. You need a little bit, you need some, uh, some current in order to maintain that voltage. Okay, gotcha, thank mm -hmm. you. And is it always the case that you ground the bottom node? It's typically the case. I could imagine cases where you wouldn't, but but yeah, it's, it would be typical to ground that node because you're then you're then you've got a node voltage here at the uh, input, a node voltage at the output. It's all referenced to the ground there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Now, now if this is a, a variable voltage regulator, I showed you that there's a there's a uh, like a voltage divider that actually connects to that adjust node there. Um, Mm, so okay. That wouldn't be grounded, yeah. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's work on part B. So let's change this. Let's say, okay, you're using a six volt um, battery and it has so many amp hours, it's so much of a size. And you wanna compare that, well, maybe a 12 volt battery is actually cheaper to buy. So let's do V in equals uh, 12 volts. Okay, so we're still gonna ca calculate P in and P out. P in uh, is equal to, in this case, I in, V in. We're still gonna assume one amp, right? We need one amp for that device at 12 volts, and that's one wa uh, 12 watts and then P out is equal to I out, V out, right, still five watts. So look at what happened to our efficiency. Wow, that efficiency went to P out over P in, five over 12, right, that's 41%, that's horrible, right? over half of your energy is, is heating up the box of your project box, right? It's, it's going somewhere, it's going into your circuit. Over 50%, well, six, almost 60% is, is going into the voltage regulator. And that means over half of your battery's storage is uh, getting used just as heat. And only 40% is making it to your, your device. Okay, so, so what's this mean? What's the, what's the, the takeaway about efficiency is these linear regulators are, are reasonable to use when your uh, battery voltage is just a little higher than your device voltage. You, you can do this. I mean, it is okay to use, uh, to have an efficiency of 41%. I mean, this'll work it's, uh, as long as your box is cooled because you have, I'll show you how many watts you have being absorbed by that regulator. This'll work, but if you actually only have 40% efficiency of energy usage from your battery, you might want to look at a different solution like a DC to DC converter. Uh, for, for a six volt source and a five volt device, yeah, I would take this. 80% uh, would be okay with me unless it's a you know 
super low power device that's supposed to work a long time on a battery, but 41%, I'd probably change my approach. The regulator power, the, the, the heat, right? The, the power that's going into heat, heating up that regulator is uh, 12 watts minus five watts equals seven watts. I'll tell you, that's gonna be one hot regulator. Uh, I wouldn't get my fingers on that because it would be pretty darn hot um, in that small of a device. So again, that's another reason I probably wouldn't do this. I wouldn't have a 12 volt source supplying one amp to a five volt load. Ah, I might do this over here. This would be fun. I'm curious as to like, what's the size limit on these voltage regulators? Can you they use, can you like, is there a way to do high power stuff like energy generation? Um, yeah, there is. So um, the, these regulators, if, if you look at that uh, device that I showed that kind of looks like, I'm gonna try to draw it here. You know, it looks like this uh, big transistor packaged with three leads coming out of the bottom. So the purpose of this tab is actually to connect it to the case or connect it to a heat sink so that you can get rid of the heat. So you can use these in a higher power application. Um, you just have to heat sink the device so it doesn't burn itself out. What I would probably do, you know, if it, in, in a higher power situation, let's suppose you had to deliver many amps Right, just to something. What I would do is, for example, if I had a 12 volt source and I had to deliver it to uh, a five volt load, I would do this. Oftentimes you use what's called a DC to DC converter. And th what those chips do is they, they uh, produce a square wave usually, sometimes a triangular wave. They turn the voltage on and off so that um, it controls current through it controls the slope of current through an inductor. And you know that uh, when current changes through an inductor, the rate of change of current through an inductor is what uh, causes the voltage to happen across that inductor. So you can cause, for example, a ramp to happen across an inductor and step the voltage up from 12 volts or step the voltage down. So yeah, someone mentioned a buck converter. So there's buck converter and a boost converter, right? Boost converter is stepping up the voltage, buck converter is stepping down the voltage. Um, so so you can you can do that. And then what is typically done is you get this voltage closer to the voltage that you want for the device. So you might have, you might set it for like, I don't know, 5.3 volts, something like that at the output. And then you would take this and you would because these linear regulators have um, pretty good um, uh, regulation capabilities and they're actually good good noise performance. So this DC to DC converter, since it has chopping of voltages, it, it generates an AC, usually has kind of a noisy output. And then what you do is you put one of these voltage regulators with a V-reg uh, with a couple of capacitors and you get a nice clean five volts. So if you wanted to deliver several amps from 12 volts to five volts, this is how I would do it. I would get a DC to DC converter, uh, generate a little over five volts, put a linear regulator, and you'd have a nice clean five volts at the output, right? So that's that's reasonable to do. If you ever have a project where you need to do this, it's it's reasonable to do. You can go buy these parts and get reference designs from you know Texas Instruments or analog devices and you know, build this up and then put a voltage regulator on. It's it's reasonable to do. I, I, you know enough now. You you have enough measurement capability skill. You know enough about voltage and current and um and and uh, reading data sheets, right? That you could go build this uh, uh, pretty reasonably right now. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions. Okay, so this um, completes the material for the course, right? So we have uh, we have covered what I want to cover. We're going to I'm going to give you a preview of the exam in the few minutes we have left. 
Um, but, I, but I do just want to bring this up. So we have covered all of the circuits course. You remember that from basic electrical theory through RC circuits and phasers and impedance. Right? We covered electronics, diodes and transistors and op amps. Right? And then we covered digital systems. We talked about gates. We talked about uh, digital number systems. We talked about the architecture of a microcontroller and what digital ports are. Um, we talked about motors and servos, right? How you make a shaft turn on a motor, how, how you can control the speed or the angle of, of shafts with a servo motor or a stepper motor. We talked a little bit about sensors, right? The light detector that you used in your project. You used a photo transistor. We talked about a photo diode. We talked about building interface circuits like a trans impedance amplifier. Right? And then finally, again, I wanted to, I, th I think that the voltage regulator is a good application to talk about because it talks about, well, diodes and transistors and a practical application that you, 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 you might run into if you have a battery powered project in, in the future. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm re really happy we made it through all of these um, uh, in, in this class. And I, I think you're really well prepared for attacking projects in the future um, that, that you're going to run into for design projects and, and products. So, uh, so what I want to do now is I want to talk about, uh, s start the exam review here, just to give you a little intro. So I expect, I expect the exam will be three or four problems with subparts just like the other exams were, and I'll, I'll publish this out in an announcement. Um, I don't expect the exam to be a big time crunch. I expect, uh, so you have something like two and a half hours. I'll design the exam so uh, maybe it takes me a little longer to work it uh, compared to the other exams, but I don't think you're gonna feel a, a time crunch. I think you could work it comfortably um, in an hour and uh, I mean, don't let that stop you from studying, but but I think you'll have plenty of time on the exam. So I don't want you to be time crunched on the exam. Um, here are the topics that will be emphasized. Remember, it goes back to the exam material, goes back to day one, knowing what current voltage and power is. But we're going to, we should concentrate on right during the review op amps. This was the first topic of like the post exam two material yeah did you uh mean to switch back to like slides or oh yeah i did i fortunately it thank you fortunately i didn't show too much um i didn't show anything really but I'll just put this up there thank you so the here's the uh operational amplifier um uh topic, right? We talked about amplifiers using op amps. We talked about comparators. Um, and the next topic will be digital electronics. We talked about uh, numeric data. We talked about combinatorial logic and how to make decisions with gates. And then on to microcontroller concepts and digital ports, right? Inputs and outputs. Take a look at the practice problems. You'll see some micro microcontroller example problems. Um, we talked about electric motors, right? DC motor direction and speed control, and stepper motors um, for precision speed control, precise speed control, and angle control, and servo motors right? for angle control. And then we talked about uh, electronic sensors, right? light sensors, photodiodes. Your project involved a photo transistor. And we built a circuit, a trans impedance amplifier out of, well, op amps, right? Back to the beginning, op amps to interface the electronic, the electric transducer to the outside world where it had a useful output. And finally, today we covered voltage regulators, uh, Zener diodes, and power efficiency. Okay. So um, what we're going to do next time is I'm going to go through some problems. We will work these as clicker problems. So have your clicker ready. And uh, I will go through the problems. And then uh, after the class, I'll, I'll post the problems and the solutions. So you'll have these to study from. There are review problems, just like exam problems out there. There are practice problems. You can go through those. But we'll work these uh, all next class 
op amp problems, digital problems, uh, voltage regulator problems, uh, and uh, you know you you answer with your clicker, and we'll talk about the solutions. Okay, so that's where we will wrap up today. Um, I will be able to go to 6:30 today for office hours, um, but uh, and we'll talk more on Monday. Uh, and then office hours on Monday also. So uh, thanks for joining class. Um, stick around for office hours if you want to ask any questions or if you just want to listen to the discussion. And I will start office hours in just a minute. And if I don't see you at office hours, I will see you next time. Have a good night.